Hello students. Today we are starting our online classes for physics. I hope you are all fine. And today this is the first part of our physics class. And in this we will be discussing our unit 3 simple machines. And in this chapter we will be discussing about machine terms today. Today we will be discussing only about machine terms. After that in the next video and next class we will be discussing about the first simple machine liver and then the second simple machine pulley and we'll summarize the chapter okay let's start you can take notes if you want so introducing this chapter the first question will be what is a machine we use a lot of machines every day simple machines like pen spoon knife and we can say that a machine is a device which helps us to perform uh, works easily, conveniently and more quickly. So what's the machine? A machine is a device which helps us to perform our works easily, conveniently and quickly. Remember these three terms. In a more technical way, we can say that simple machines are devices through which either the magnitude or the direction of application of force is changed to achieve a certain advantage or by which we can obtain a gain in speed. So what things are changed? Magnitude or direction of force. Magnitude of force or direction of force. And when you change magnitude of force or direction of force, we will get some gain or advantage or we can obtain a gain in speed. It is same as the first definition but it is made a little more technically sound. Okay, study this definition and we'll go to some examples of machines. Machines are generally classified into simple machines or complex machines in nature. So you studied this in small classes. We know that simple machines we use on a daily basis things like spoon, hammer, nutcracker, knife, liver, inclined plane, bottle opener, scissors, pliers, fire tongs, wheelbarrow and these are some of the simple machines which we use. Coming to complex machines, we have things like smartphones, computer, washing machine, refrigerator, television, vehicles, air conditioners, fans. Okay, these are uh, these complex machines are machines which are made up of many simple machines. Many simple machines come together to become a complex machine. So remember these two differences. In this topic, we will be discussing more about simple machines. So types of simple machine. So simple machine is again classified into six categories. There are six categories of simple machines. The first one is a liver. A liver is just a long rod which with the help of a fulcrum helps us to move things. The second one is a pulley. Pulley is a circular disc like device which rotates around an axis at the center. A rope will run around it. Then we have inclined plane inclined plane we can push things in an inclined plane then we have a screw wedge and a screw you know it's a long nail with some threads on it and wedge is a device which has more than one inclined plane and finally we have wheel and axle the best example for wheel and axle will be a screwdriver. Screwdriver. Okay. Then these are the six categories of simple machines. And functions and uses of simple machines. There are four uses for a simple machine. Uh, as from the definition, we have seen some of the uses, three things we already discussed there. The same three things will come here. Uh, first, 
use of a symbol machine is it is used as a force multiplier we use a symbol machine to multiply the force we give small effort and the machine will multiply the force which we apply second use of a symbol machine is that it helps us to apply force in a convenient direction it helps us to apply force in a convenient direction if you want to change the direction of application of force we can use a uh, symbol machine then number three applying force in a convenient point so machine helps us to give or use force at a place where we want to apply the force we'll go into details later and number four a machine helps us to have or obtain gain in speed okay we can look into detail in each of this uses first one machine as a force multiplier so it's very difficult to lift a heavy rock we all know that but one can easily do uh, lift a heavy rock by using a crowbar okay this is the picture of a crowbar and that load given there if it is the rock you can use a crowbar and this blue rod is the crowbar and it can also be called uh, liver and using a crowbar we can give a small effort here and the load heavy load can be lifted easily okay similarly we can use a jack to lift a car so using a jack we only have to give a small amount of force in the handle part of the jack a small effort and a big load like a vehicle can be lifted easily so here we see that the machine is acting as a force multiplier okay we can go to second use of machine that is applying force in a convenient direction convenient direction so it's difficult to pull a bucket of water tied to a rope directly from the well a pulley is used in which the force is applied in the downward direction so the bucket of water is lifted from the well we are applying force in the downward direction it is easy for us to pull in the downward direction so thus we can say that if machine here the machine is this pulley and the pulley helps us to apply force in a convenient direction a third use of a machine applying force at a convenient point applying force at a convenient point so the example for that is a screwdriver so we use a screwdriver to tighten some screw uh, maybe into wood or some other material the force is applied on the handle we apply the force here in the handle part of the screwdriver but this force acts on the head of the screw it acts on the head of the screw and it moves into the wood and the screw will move into the wood so we are applying force here but the force is acting at a different point so we we apply force at the convenient point which is over here but the force is actually acting on the screw okay that is the third use and now going to the fourth use a machine helps to obtain gain in speed or increase in speed so here you see a scissors so when we cut cloth using a pair of scissors the blade moves longer on the cloth while the handle moves a small distance so here you can see in the middle of the scissors this point is called the fulcrum and we have a long load arm and a short effort arm for the scissors so shorter effort arm and longer load arm will help to obtain gain in speed this part of scissors moves slowly and this part will move through a longer distance so scissors is used as a speed multi now we go to the section of machine terms the terms related to machine so technical terms related to machines are effort load mechanical advantage velocity ratio work input 
work output and efficiency so these are the seven technical terms related to machines and we'll look into detail okay the first one effort effort is the force applied to a machine to do work the force is applied to a machine to do work and is represented by the symbol e then load load is the force applied by the machine the force applied by the machine on the body on which the work is done and load is represented by the symbol l and we have mechanical advantage ma which is the ratio of load to effort ratio it is a ratio of load to effort it is called mechanical advantage of the machine we can write mechanical advantage ma is equal to load l divided by effort e and the fourth term velocity ratio represented by symbol uh, vr the ratio of velocity of effort to velocity of load is called velocity ratio the, we can write it as velocity ratio is velocity of effort divided by velocity of load ve by vl so we know that velocity is equal to distance by time so we can write it as distance of effort divided by time the whole divided by distance of load divided by time so therefore this t and t gets cancelled and it becomes distance traveled by effort de divided by distance traveled by load dl or we can write it as displacement of effort by displacement of load so velocity ratio can be written as uh, ve by vl or it can be written as de by dl then work input the energy supplied to the machine the energy supplied to the machine or work done on the machine by the effort is called work input work done on the machine by effort is called work input so output useful energy obtained from the machine so obtained from the machine or the useful work done by the machine so here in the case of input work done on the machine but in the case of output work done by the machine on the load so input is represented by the symbol w i work output is represented by the symbol w o okay now let's go to the seventh and last technical term which is efficiency so efficiency is the ratio of useful work done by the machine to the work done on the machine so we already discussed by the machine work done by the machine and on the machine so we can say that it is the ratio of work output to work input and efficiency is represented by the symbol eta we can see eta over here it's a greek term greek letter and we can write the formula of efficiency as efficiency eta is equal to work output w o divided by work input w i work output by work input into 100 percent will give the efficiency in 100 percent and remember efficiency mechanical advantage and velocity ratio does not have unit as they are all ratios so now we are coming to another important topic which is principle of a machine so principle of a machine states that the output work given by the machine is equal to input work we do on the machine whatever work we do on the machine the, there should be an output and it is in the case of an ideal machine in that case eta will be equal to 1 or it will be 100 percent output and input equal right so uh, if output and work input are equal then they will get divided and you will get the answer as 1 or 100 percent efficient so not all machines are 100 percent because there are problems like friction 
all machines cannot be 100% because the moving parts of the machine will have friction between them and also the parts of the machine are not weightless so we have to apply force to move them some input is used by the machine so and therefore a machine cannot be 100% efficient actual machines cannot be 100% efficient there are no ideal machines only actual machines exist okay and this is the principle of a machine and the last thing which we have to study today is relationship between efficiency mechanical advantage and velocity ratio relationship between efficiency mechanical advantage velocity ratio for this we have to consider a practical machine or actual machine or a real machine real machine is something which is not an ideal machine and this machine displaces a load l through a distance dl when an effort e causes a displacement through de in time t so easy to remember we move a load l by using effort e uh, in time t and distance moved by load is dl and distance moved by effort is de so what we are going to do is we will write output output it is work work is equal to force into displacement we already studied that so based on that uh, equation we will write work output is equal to load into displacement of load so we can write it as L into DL. Similarly, we are going to write about work input, which is effort into displacement of effort, which is E into D. Easy. Now we are going to divide them both so that we can get efficiency because efficiency is equal to work output by work input, WO by WI. So when we divide it, we will get L into DL divided by E into DE. So we are refining it and we are writing as L into E into DL by D. Nothing is changed. Everything is same. Only the uh, multiplication symbol came in between. So now looking at the first part L by E. So L by E is actually mechanical advantage. And the second part D L by D E. We wrote it in the reciprocal format. So it becomes D E E by D L and also 1 by D E by D L. So we know that DE by DL is actually velocity ratio. So from these expressions we can write eta is equal to MA by VR. Eta is equal to MA by VR or MA is equal to efficiency into velocity ratio. So this MA came from L by E and this VR came by the reciprocal of DE by DL okay and the, therefore eta is equal to MA by VR so thus we can conclude this topic and we have to remember certain points for that the first one is efficiency is the ratio of mechanical advantage to velocity ratio that is efficiency is equal to mechanical advantage by velocity ratio second one mechanical advantage of a machine is equal to the product of efficiency and velocity ratio similar mechanical advantage is equal to product of efficiency and velocity ratio and for an ideal machine efficiency is 100% for practical and actual machines efficiency is less than 1 and MA is always less than VR for practical machines remember that MA is less than VR for practical machines okay thank you students that's the end of our first slideshow if you have any doubts please contact me you can answer the questions which I have attached to this video. Thank you all. Have a nice day.